With this video, I'm covering the second nurse series of the alternate version of problem 1-7. I'm focused on part three. I'm going to knock out the first three of the financial statements and reserve a separate video for the statement of cash flow. So where we left off in our first video was we had already recorded the transactions for Graham Company for the month of May and showed how those affected our accounting equation. The next step is preparing our financial statements. The first financial statement prepared is always the income statement. And an income statement is prepared for a period of time. And for Graham Company, that would be for the month ended May 31st. Now, all of these items from our accounting equation don't show up on the income statement. The income statement shows profit for the period of time and profit is revenues minus expenses. So we're just gonna focus on revenues minus expenses. Graham Company is a pretty simple business and it only has one type of revenue and that was consulting services revenue. So we can just show that as one summary line item of $11,900. While its expenses did total up to $5,210, just from a business perspective, since it included different types of expense, it would be helpful to know those different types of expenses. So we're going to create separate line items on our income statement. For example, if you recall, Graham Company encountered a rent expense of $2,300, twice salaries expense of $730, first half of the month, second half of the month, so it $730 times two is $1,460, cleaning expense of $800, telephone expense of $300, utilities expense of $260, and last but not least, an advertising expense of $90. When we added those all up on that accounting equation, it added up to $5,210. Total expenses, $5,210. Next, we need to subtract our expenses, $5,210, from our revenues, $11,900, to get our overall profit of $6,690. Now, in accounting land, we use more technical terms for profit, and we call it net income as in this case where revenues exceed or greater than expenses, we call it net income of $6,690. If expenses had exceeded revenues, instead of net income, we would have called it net loss. So income is pretty synonymous with revenues, but when you add that net before it, you're implying or suggesting you have to subtract something from your income or your revenues, and the something you subtract from it is your cost or your expenses. First statement done. Our next statement in order is going to be our statement of retained earnings, and we're going to carry forward our net income or net loss amount from our income statement to our statement of retained earnings. Again, here's our overall summary of our accounting equation from our earlier part. Our statement of retained earnings is only going to focus on a portion of our equity, our dividends, our revenues, and expenses. Our statement of retained earnings is similar to our income statement in that it's also showing a period of time. And for Graham Company, that's going to be for the month ended May 31st. And if you recall, retained earnings is the profit maintained in the business minus any distributions in the form of dividends they paid out to their shareholders. Our starting point for a statement of retained earnings is to demonstrate the change in retained earnings for the beginning of this period of time to the end of the period of time. And so since we're doing for the month ended May 31st, the beginning would be May 1st. We just started business. We didn't have any retained earnings. And so any business just starting in that period would have a zero balance for retained earnings. Our next item is to either add the net income from our income statement or subtract the net loss from our income statement. Keep in mind, we already showed the revenues and the expenses directly on our income statement. So we're just gonna pull the summary amount from our income statement. Again, revenues of 11,900, minus expenses of 5,200, ended with a net income of 6,690. Net income adds to the retained earnings, so we're gonna add that to our prior zero balance to also be $6,690. Now, we're not done yet. We wanna subtract out any distributions to our stockholders in the form of dividends because those are amounts not retained within the business. 
The total dividend amount was $1,800. Again, that's a subtraction from our retained earnings. So we will subtract our $1,800 from our beginning balance of zero, our net income of $6,690, and end May 31st with a retained earnings balance of $4,890. Our next stop is going to be our balance sheet. That's going to be our third statement in our order. And we're going to carry forward our ending balance for retained earnings for May 31st of $4,890 to our balance sheet. So again, showing you our overall summary of our accounting equation. Keep in mind, we already showed our dividends directly on our statement of retained earnings, our revenues and expenses directly on our income statement, and then indirectly on our statement of retained earnings. So dividends, revenues, and expenses will not show up directly on our balance sheet. Our balance sheet, the purpose of that is to show our balances of our assets, liabilities, and direct form of equity as of a point in time. So the other two statements were for the period of May. This is for the point at the end of that time, so as of May 31st. Assets, we're going to summarize here. Cash, $47,120. Accounts receivable had a zero balance, so we don't have to have a line item for that since it had a zero balance. Office equipment was an asset, so we'll bring down that balance of $1,860. So total assets, cash of $47,120 plus office equipment of $1,860 ends with total assets of $48,980. Our liabilities are our accounts payable. That's the only liability they had of $90. Our equity is going to include our two major forms of equity. One, our contributed capital or a common stock. That represents what our owner invests in the business, and that's $44,000. And equity, keep in mind, we're not going to summarize, we're not going to record all this directly, our dividends, revenues, and expenses. We've all summarized that on prior statements. So we're going to pull forward that retained earnings balance from our statement of retained earnings, that ending balance for May 31st, and record that on our balance sheet. How we derived that was our beginning balance of retained earnings of zero, we summarized our revenues and expenses, revenues of 11,900 minus expenses of 5,200 equal to net income of 6,690 minus our dividends of 1,800. And again, if you recall, our ending balance then for retained earnings was 4,890. So that's all we're going to show on our balance sheet for retained earnings. If, if anyone wants more detail, they can go back to our statement of retained earnings and then go back to our income statement. Now we want to total up our liabilities and equity because we want to prove out our accounting equation is in balance. So accounts payable of $90, common stock of $44,000 plus retained earnings of $4,890 equal total liabilities and equity of $48,000. 980. And again, this proves out our accounting equation is in balance. Our next video is going to cover our last financial statement, the statement of retained earnings.